Thanks, man. <laughs> the first time I ever read this gospel story, I thought I had misread it. I thought I was reading a misprint, honestly. The version that Tia read from, which is a paraphrase of that story, says that Jesus said, these guys sure got lots of faith. The version I read from as a teenager simply said, when he saw their faith. And I thought, wait a minute, their faith? Shouldn't it say when he saw his faith, the paralyzed man? And so I checked with the other version of the story in Mark's gospel. Same words, when he saw their faith. And so then I checked with the version of the story in Luke's gospel. Same words, when he saw their faith. And I thought, well, who was there? There implies more than one. Well, it involves the man, yes, but it involves more than just him. It involves his friends who brought him in to the house. Now, Mark's version of the story adds a detail that Matthew and Luke don't. They tell us how many carried him in. Four. Four friends. If you've been watching the FIFA, whenever someone gets really hurt on the pitch or the field, they bring out the stretcher and four guys take them off to get medical attention. So these four friends, we don't know their names, but they brought him to Jesus and they tore open the roof, which you could do back in those days, and then you could repair it just as easily, lowered him down because they couldn't get him through the front door. And then he looks at the man, sees his physical condition that he cannot walk, he's paralyzed. And before Jesus says anything about physical healing, he looks at the man lying there on that bed, that cot, that stretcher, and says, your sins are forgiven. And interestingly, that man doesn't complain and ask his friends to take him out of the house. The friends don't complain and cart him out. The crowd in the house doesn't complain for when they hear Jesus say, your sins are forgiven. Who complains? The religious leaders. And they say, this man is speaking blasphemy because only God can forgive sins. Yes, that's true. So if only God can forgive sins and Jesus is saying, your sins are forgiven, hmm, Mr. Pharisee, put two and two together. What Jesus is saying is, I'm God and I have the authority to forgive sins, including this man's sins. Before he healed his body, he healed his soul. He looked at this man and he saw something worse than his physical condition in which he could not walk. He saw a spiritual condition where he was sick with sin. So he went to the root of the problem, the sin problem, dealt with that first and said, your sins are forgiven. And then when they complained, these religious leaders, only God can forgive sins, and he said to them, What's easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? Well, if you ask me that question, I would say both are equally difficult. I don't have the power or the authority to forgive sins, and I don't have the power or authority to heal people, especially paralyzed people, but Jesus does. And so he says to his cynics, his critics, there in the house to show you, to prove to you that I have the authority 
to forgive sins on earth. Again, he says to that man lying there, stand up and walk. And he does. Proving to everybody that Jesus can forgive sins and he can heal people. Did that man believe that Jesus could heal him? Yes, of course. Otherwise, why would he have asked his friends to bring him to the house where Jesus was? If he thought that Jesus couldn't or wouldn't, why go through all the trouble of wrecking the roof, lowering him right there in front of Jesus? Of course that man had faith, but his friends had faith too. And when Jesus saw their faith, that man who was paralyzed and the four friends who brought him in, when he saw their faith, then Jesus worked the miracle. The miracle of not only healing his body, but healing his soul. Not just restoring his ability to walk, but forgiving his sins. When he saw their faith. When you read those words, will you read them as your faith? When Jesus saw your faith, when Jesus sees your faith, then he can work. Time after time in the Gospels, it says Jesus could not do any mighty miracles because people would not believe. They refused to show faith. He wanted to, but they wouldn't let him because their hearts were closed and hard. But this man and his four friends Filled with faith, we know you can do it. And we ask you to do it. And he did it. Does Jesus see your faith? Think about those who brought you to faith in Jesus. When I talk to people about how they came to become Christians, how they came to a saving faith in Jesus, oftentimes they will point to one particular individual or a special group of people that were instrumental in their lives to lead them to faith in Christ. Who led you to faith? Have you thanked God for that person or for those people? God used them as a channel of blessing for you. And another question, probably even more important. Who is waiting for you to exercise faith for them? Who is waiting for you and your Christian faith to lead them to faith in Jesus? Who is waiting for you to bring them to Jesus? Those four friends physically brought their friend to Jesus for healing. He gave him a lot more than restored body. He gave him the freedom of forgiveness just like we sang a little while ago. My chains are gone, I've been set free. Free from the burden of guilt and shame. The freedom of forgiveness of all your sins. Who is waiting in your life for you to be that friend, to bring them to Jesus, to explain to them what the gospel really is? to share with them your testimony, your faith story of how you came to trust Jesus as your Savior and Lord and how they can do the same. It's not rocket science. He doesn't play favorites. Those who come to me, Jesus says, I will never drive away. But he says, come to me and you'll find rest for your souls. Who is waiting for you 
to bring them to Jesus. Is it a friend? Is it a relative? Is it a coworker? Is it a fellow student? Who is it? A neighbor? Those men exercised their faith by bringing their friend to Jesus. Will you exercise your Christian faith to bring others to Jesus as well? So that in turn, they will do the same. I want to close with this. Another person in the Gospels, not Matthew, not Mark, not Luke, John's Gospel, first chapter. Familiar name, but he usually plays second fiddle to his more familiar brother. But what he did was in line with what those four friends did for their paralyzed friend on that day. The passage reads from John chapter 1. Andrew, who was Simon Peter's brother, was a follower of Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah. Then he brought Simon to Jesus. Will you be like that, Andrew? And bring someone, bring someone's to Jesus. Will you be like those four friends and bring others to Jesus so that they too will trust him, will follow him, and receive from him forgiveness, salvation, and more blessing than they could ever imagine. Exercise your faith. Live it out. And bring others to Jesus. Amen.